Welcome to Sound Values, powered in part by LSA Burger and Classic of Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight to DentonRadio.com, located in the beautiful Discover Denton Welcome Center on the ever-cooling Denton Square. You can find us live right now on Facebook on DentonRadio.com or go to our website and listen to the interview live right there. I've got the man, the myth, the legend of many, many hats, Matt Battaglia. Is it Battaglia? I actually lost all my hats. What? Is it Battaglia? Battaglia. Okay. Yeah, not a soft G. Okay, because see, I was corrected about this last night because I was yeah. like, yeah, Battaglia is coming on the show. And they're like, dude, that's not his name. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> dude, I've got gosh. it all my entire life. I've been I mean, calling him the wrong thing for two and a half years. Yeah, I've got Battaglia. Uh, a lot of people's <laughs> favorite was Buttuglia when I was a kid. Yeah. They did a lot of things with LaCroix, too. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, there's a ex- drink named after you. I know. Well, dude, I went to Italy and, uh, uh, it's a really common name there. You know, I say, really? oh, my name is Battaglia. They're like, oh, there's, you know, there's a town of Battaglia there <laughs> where your entire family is from. Yeah, apparently LaCroix is like Smith in France. Okay. You know, but recently, like, like especially Darwin Price has been posting, like, all his bubble bath pictures with LaCroix <laughs> cans. And uh, that cracks me up every time, you know. Um, and I actually was at Natural Grocers. You might have seen this picture. But I found these bar- brand of cookies that were called Mikey's. Oh, I saw that picture. Yeah, and then the can of LaCroix. I was like, this is dude, too money. Yeah. we got to take a picture of this right dude, now. That, so, that was good. But, man, I'm excited to have you in here, dude. Sweet, it's, yeah. you know, um, I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate you taking the time out to, to, to come and hang with us tonight. We'll be talking, you know, life, music, festivals, fashion. Because, let's face hey. it, I've actually st- have have – called out before somebody's like dude i really like the way you're dressing i'm like this is what i call the the bataglia <laughs> matt Biswaglia. Right. yeah the matt Biswaglia because downs open with like a plain t underneath yep, yep. and i was like it's just it's such a money such a, such a nice way of dress so we'll be talking fashion as well because i i do want to know where you get those like longer tees that you wear i right. don't think i haven't noticed man you know but the first thing i want to start off about man is just kind of get a little background because i know you but i don't know a whole lot about you okay uh, you know uh, you book shows you've you've th- put a festival together that's gone above and beyond and you know you you're you're a household name around around this mm, area sometimes for good for better or worse you right, know right um so what is kind of your background man where do you come from you know where did like wh- where did you grow up i mean i was born and raised in denton okay yeah, yeah. right born on man at the hospital i mean it wasn't called flow um i think it was De- i want to say it was denton regional and then it, they that yeah. one got torn down they built a new one mm-hmm. i think i think that's what it was so you 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 are a og ogd the og yeah. denton man yep, yep. that's that's it that's, was like forty thousand people when i was born you know that's awesome so did you go to Ryan or Denton? I went to Ryan. Okay. Yeah, but then my senior year, I homeschooled, so I didn't graduate from Ryan. Okay. What uh, What year did you graduate? 2007. Okay. Right on. So I was wondering because I was like, I actually have no idea how old Matt is. Yeah, either, I'm older so. than I look. Yeah. I mean, I'm 30 now as well, so yeah. I graduated in 06. For, from, dude, from, uh, for real, man. Yeah, I know. People, like, when I work, used to work over at LSA, they'd be like, what's up, Dad? I'm like, it's not offensive anymore. Like, I'm 30 years old. I'm not wearing the dad hat. You got yeah. the dad hat. <laughs> oh, man. Like I was. Uniform. I felt so dad at the pumpkin patch today, too. When I was walking around, I had my Columbia jacket on and this dad hat. Yes. Like, even one of the girls I wore with, she was like, you look you look like a dad. Like right a father. Now. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. At least I look like I'm responsible. Yeah, you know, that's I got true. That going that's true. On. I never get that one. So what kind of – so just kind of give you an idea. So I grew up down in South Lake, and I can remember – Coming up here to see a couple shows. One of the yep. first shows I ever went to on my own was Astronautilus mm-hmm. over at Haley's. I was there. Uh, I think we've actually have talked about this before. What got you involved in the music scene in Denton like at the beginning, man? What got you out there? Oh, man, I don't know. I think a lot of kids were probably in bands as they were growing up. So I was in bands since middle school, and I was in orchestra, and my par- my mom worked at UNT, so I always hear the music around there. And there's nice. I mean, even from middle school, there was house shows and shows in basements and living rooms and J&J's basement. And I mean, at 15, I got to go to uh, Atmosphere at Haley's. Oh, wow. And Atmosphere played at Haley's. So I think it was just kind of natural. Uh, and when I found out I wasn't talented enough to be in a band, I tried to rap. I wasn't talented <laughs> enough to do that. So I was like, okay, let's try the promotion side of things. Like okay. That happens. Right on, man. Yeah, I I, under, I understand understand that 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 movement that, yeah. that needs to be done. You I know? just don't want to grow up, basically. Yeah, hey, I mean, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Yeah. you know, it's just yeah. the way it goes. Which is closing, by the way. Do you hear about that? No way. Well, they're going bankrupt, so they might stay open. But man, well, everybody's buying their toys on Amazon now. Mm-hmm. You know, because first off, you don't have to take your kid to Toys R Us and deal with that whole thing. You can just buy everything online. Yep. It's, you know, and Junior can just play with whatever you already bought them. It's delivered in one day. It's amazing. I actually experienced the one day delivery recently. One day. Yeah. 
Yeah, I paid I paid seven dollars and it was delivered to me like in, in that, one day. In the same day? Yeah, it was a phone charger. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And they were like, "It'll be there at nine o'clock." It was there in three and a half hours. It's a phone charger I needed because my dog ate mine. That's nuts. You know, so man, so you were going to shows. You yeah. went over. You went to Atmosphere. Atmosphere at Haley's too. You know, that just that blows my mind. That's great. something else. Yeah, he signed my uh, driver's permit. Slug can't drive. <laughs> Had that for the longest time. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. So, you what like? kind of bands did you try to play in at first man whenever we were you know started in middle school was punk and then post hardcore came out and emo came out so then it turned into emo uh then my friends all started hardcore bands and i wasn't super into hardcore Mm -hmm. when i say hardcore i don't mean hardcore punk i'm talking the metal scene back then yeah hxc and all that Mm -hmm. uh so and i always loved hip-hop my first album i ever got was dmx you know from my oldest brother nice um so I went more into the hip hop realm. So I was like an emo hip hop kid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then we started rapping. Me and uh, Corey Clater. Yeah. Uh, we started rapping together, and then we put a band together for one show, and it, people liked it. So we the kept it going. Yeah, that's kind of how I met all the the venue owners and and bookers around here. Nice. So man. that I could do the festival later on. That's cool. Okay. So and you started like when did you and Corey start that group? Uh, yeah, man, I had to. I want to say 2010 ish. Oh, okay. Probably. 2009 or 10. All right. So you you guys are like, what, 22? 20 ish? Yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 20 to 22. Man, so how do you know Corey? Uh, I knew Corey since high school. We got okay. into a lot of trouble, a lot of fun in high school. <laughs> Met him, uh, I want to say, my sophomore year. Uh, and we, we just had the same friend group. We weren't super close. And after high school, we became really close. That's awesome. And now man. he's becoming a daddy for real. Yeah, I know. And, uh, yeah, he's, getting, Something else. he's married. So, yeah. I know. When, like, Watching the guys that you got into trouble with in high school like yeah. slowly become like the men that they're going to be like super respectable man. Yeah, like one of my best friends who was like grade A troublemaker, like gave me more headaches whenever we lived with each other down in Austin than I could ever imagine. I had more fun with him too, but now he's like he's got his kid on the way, he's married, yeah. lives up in Colorado, you know, and like does his his job all the time. So Makes you think about your life, you know? Sometimes, <laughs> man, like sometimes, but I was just talking to my dad last night and he was like, well, you know, like you got the, he's like, I guarantee you that if you asked your buddies, he's like, they would, tr- they might, you know, he's like, no, they wouldn't say it in front of their, their wives, but they would, they would trade you just for a week. Right. You oh, know, just yeah. like to play I mean, music. They got, that movie. That. they got movies about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the grass is always greener on the other side. Dude. You know, it, yeah. Always. And that, that's, yeah, I always have to, I have to keep that, you know, that positive vibe, yep. you know? So you mentioned Andy's or mm-hmm. no, you mentioned Haley's, but then you mentioned the emo thing. Yeah. And so you guys have been doing something recently, <laughs> uh, emo forever. Right. Uh, I and mean, that's, we've had two events so far. So kind of tell me how that idea came about, how you well, there's got this that started. huge a emo night called emo night LA started okay. out in LA by these guys and it travels the country. They do one in Dallas. It's always really successful with Mike Zemer and third string productions. Uh, so, uh, I knew they wouldn't come to Denton to do it. Uh, so I was like, you know, they're not going to come to Denton. So I'm going to start my own little thing called emo forever. Yeah. Uh, cause we couldn't call it emo night. <laughs> so I was like, we'll call it emo forever. Uh, and yeah, that's really just how it started, dude. I mean, I, I was that person. Like I love that music still mm-hmm. do. Um, yeah. So what, yeah, like, what's natural. some of your what's some of your more favorite emo music if you go back? I mean, I, it sounds generic, but I was there when Tell All Your Friends was being released. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. When it was still just like a little bootleg. I was copy, right there so too, too, man. Yeah. Taking Back Sunday, I was there yep. when nobody knew who they used was. So it yep. sounds generic, but they used Taking Back Sunday. I mean, those are probably a, my two forever ones. You know, seeing that. I mean, we grew up in the same era, so I mean, I had an older brother. Just it's it's kind of crazy when you were saying it. I had an older brother who listened to hip hop. You know, it was Bone Thugs and Harmony oh, and yeah. Notorious B.I.G. and Busta yes. Rhymes and, you all know, all, all of a lot of that kind of stuff and Nas and everything. And so we used to roll around in the car and then the first CD that I ever got was the Offspring Americana. Oh, and he bought it. Album, and yeah. Dude. And he bought that for me. Great. Album. So I was listening to like, uh, you know, Green Day and Offspring and yep. then Bone Thugs and Eminem and Snoop and all and all that kind of stuff. It's a great era. And yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. And the first concert that I ever went to. Not by myself, but that my parents dropped me off at was Boxcar Racer, The Used. Dude, at the Bronco Bowl. Yeah. Dude, I was there. Oh! <laughs> Dude, that's the first time I heard of The Used. My that's friends were awesome. all excited about him, and I saw yeah. him, and Bert puked on stage. Yeah. I never heard any music like The Used, Mm-mm. and that changed my whole world yeah. view of everything. Those guys were something else, too. Dude, they and were even, amazing. Even now, I, I forget the name of the song. Um... Uh, that it was called a taste of ink. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, the taste of ink. That was awesome. That song, and Still then they great. had that, that whole up- album was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they had that other one video where it's them like walking through all those different stages. Like I'm far from lonely, and it's all that I got. I think Ooh, was like the uh, name of it. Uh, on my own. Yeah, it might have been that one. 
And then I think like the most emo that came out, and even I wasn't, I tried to like, was Hawthorne Heights. I, I wasn't Hawthorne Heights. Yeah, I was. Like, I like I like some of their stuff now yeah. as I'm older, but at the time, you know, I like Postal Service. I liked, I'm of course, brand new. Uh, oh, they've yeah. lasted the most. Yeah, they they've, age yeah. so well. Yeah. I mean, all their albums are different than the last mm-hmm. they're, they're that, a great band yeah and then like you were saying tell all your friends great you know the you uh, self-titled i like my comic romance's first two albums mm-hmm. a lot um there's so many back then. i mean i even liked blood brothers and poison the well and uh glass jaw yeah and, and i i got into like then. from autumn to ashes and atreyu yeah. and that kind of stuff that was a bit more of like the post hardcore and between yep. the buried and me and all that yep. and then i had my buddies who like you said were in they were metal. super i mean i like some of the songs but i didn't sit there in my car and just vibe out to yeah. it like the chariot you know mm-hmm. and job for a cowboy and all this stuff Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Norma Jean, dude. I, I respected it, but yeah, I just used to like. I probably I wore that TBS to all your friends. I wore that dude. CD out. Oh no, that's one of my favorite albums of all yeah, time. That, that was that was great. Self titled. Mm-hmm. So how did uh how I mean first off, man, the photos of you and Chris Rogers. <laughs> how did like those were awesome? And what's funny is when I first saw that, like I I, I thought to myself, I was like, who. I just like heard myself for a second. Guy. <laughs> I was just like, how? these photos were incredible. So who took those pictures and how did you and Chris kind of just come decide? up for the second one? Yeah. yeah for the, the second, second one, one uh, uh, Lacey, her Instagram is, uh, I think it's no, don't shoot is her photography. Instagram okay. name's Lacey Bentley. Yeah. And she was great. She just said, come on over and do it. We'll do it. <laughs> and uh, uh, She had heels for Chris. She had a fake lip ring for me. Oh, uh, got man. her makeup done by Randy Wilson. It, dude, it was so good. Like when I it saw it, so I almost fun. didn't know who it was at first. I thought it was like the people pictures. thought it was photoshopped, and I'm yeah, like, no, it was this great. Is legit. It was so well done. Barely and then, editing, even. And then who did the um, like the artwork? I guess the flyers. So the first one, I had that MySpace idea. Yeah. And people were like, dude, nobody's gonna. That's a stupid idea. <laughs> but Todd did it, and he did it amazingly. Like mm-hmm. executed the shit out of it. <laughs> executed it really well. Uh, and he's a great designer, um, and he made a MySpace page look exactly like MySpace. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one was his idea. For the second one, Chris had the idea to do a LimeWire. Remember LimeWire? Yeah. To do a LimeWire queue, and then Todd was like, I can't figure out how to put the information in it. So he had the idea to make just like a Windows XP desktop mm-hmm. screenshot and have different programs from back then nice. as the information. Dude, and that, they were both so good because I sent my buddy Jared – uh, that first one, and mm-hmm. he was like, "This is one of the best flyers I've ever seen yeah. for any event." Like, we were like, we were nervous the night before because Todd was like, "Dude, nobody's gonna get like the this is unlike any other flyer." Yeah. So we were going back and forth like, "Should we just do a regular flyer?" Mm-hmm. And then I was like, "No, dude, my gut instinct yeah. tells me we need to release this." Yeah, man. And I would say that your gut instinct is is pretty instinctual. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes. your guts know what they're thinking. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> all right. I mean, my favorite one though was so I called Chris Rogers. Like, I need a DJ. He's a DJ. He's one of my best friends. Pretty basic. I was like, Does he still yeah. go by that? Okay. I was like, dude, can you do this DJ? Be the DJ for emo forever. You you were in that scene as well. He's like, yeah, I can do it. Then right after I got the phone with him, I was like, oh my god, he is an actual former hot topic manager. <laughs> <laughs> so we made that flyer, and it's the best flyer ever. Dude. Yeah, that was people freaked out over yeah, that. Yeah, when when it said with an actual like we former made, yeah, hot topic, the real life actual former hot topic. Man. <laughs> people thought it was some people thought it was serious. Yeah, like oh, this is what Andy's is stooping to is <laughs> former hot topic managers. Like, dude, uh, if you don't get the joke, yeah, it's it, that's like that's like you know the parents who post Onion articles thinking they're a real exactly. article. Like, this is a satiric. Got a good thing. reaction out of people. Yeah, man, that's too funny. That was really funny. You know, so it's. Like, what was one of the first events you ever helped to put together? Because you've done a lot now. So well, we did all the, the basement shows. I helped a lot with those. Okay. That was the band I was in with Corey. All right. Um, uh, we actually had a reunion last year. That was great. Uh, but, yeah, so that's how I started getting into trying to do event planning. Uh, nice. But yeah, I mean, the first real one was October year one. Wow. Okay. So that's a great segue. Thank you for that. So how does something how – does, how, does, how do you first off just get the idea? How do you get the idea? We're going to go through the steps here. Like, how did you get the idea to do a festival? Well, so I was managing Stu Brutal. I was managing Essa Good, which is Corey, uh, doing a really poor job. <laughs> really poor. <laughs> but I had a little money saved up, and uh, I wanted to start a business and invest in something. And I was like, man, like, I, I think I could try to get a couple artists here mm-hmm. and see what happens. Um, so, yeah, I sat down with my friend Josh, who – we, we, he only worked on it for a couple of weeks. And then Corey came to one of the meetings, though, and, like, immediately fell in love with the idea and was like, oh, my God, like, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. So we got pretty serious about it, man. And I hit up Del the Funky Homo Sapien through Facebook. 
And he said yes. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> All right, so now let's uh, let's see if Ash Nautilus will say yes. Then he said yes, and then Bud Light was like, yeah, we'll give you a stage next month. We had a month, so it was August. We did it in September. No, first year was November. So we, we had three months to, to put the first one together. still 90 days? You're supposed to be done with P90X by the end of that. Right? You put together a festival. Right? It was it was intense, man. Yeah. Like we put up, uh, the first two years, actually, we put up all the fencing ourselves, had to like pull it off the truck and load into U-Hauls. Man. Um, so did you, like you said, you just you sent Dell a message so who, because I, I didn't live in Denton mm -hmm. during the first year. And are we on the fifth year now? Yeah, this is year five. Okay, year fifth five. anniversary. That's awesome, man. And so who were who were kind of the bigger names that you hit that up was for it. the first year? Ash Nautilus and Dell were the national acts. Nice, yeah. man. Very cool. Very, oh, dude, that's, that's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And so, and that was just, you just hit those guys up through Facebook. Well, I hit up. Dell through Facebook, and then I knew somebody who knew Astro. Okay. So we got to go through them. That's what's I up, I barely man. knew what a booking agent even was at the time. <laughs> you know? uh, I uh, I still have the shirt that I bought at Astronautilus Show at Haley's. Oh, yeah? yeah? Dude, he puts on a great show. That He's shirt, coming to Andy's I know. on uh, October 20th or 21st. I tried this hard to get to play that show. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. but I'm, sto I'm, still, I'm stoked that uh, character's on there. Dude, yeah, character's going to yeah. be perfect for yeah, that and show. Yeah, and then... Uh, I'm having a blank now, but I did sound for the other band that's uh, playing. So uh, Supersonic Lips. Yeah, yeah. Really so cool. like, really I'm, I'm still, you know, like every once in a while, ah, but you know, you got to yeah. try. You got to send those emails and send those messages like, as try. it proves right here. So after that first year, mm -hmm. what did you, what did you learn? Like, you know, when oh, you, if you had to sit down, you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do next year and not going to do next year. Oh, I mean, that's, we had a whole list of things, but uh, we did learn that it seemed like people wanted to go to more underground style music shows. Mm -hmm. So we put together a really extensive business plan, like 80 pages or something like that, and started pitching it to anybody that listened, making any phone calls I could. Uh, I called uh, Solomon Goot, who's a good friend, and uh, he worked, or was it Danny? Oh, my God. I'm going to feel really they're, bad. They're related. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to feel really bad if I... <laughs> uh, I called one of the ones with the curly yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Solomon or Danny or Danny Craft. I know who you're talking I think it was about. Danny. I think it was yeah. Danny. He worked at LSA, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Danny. So did Solomon, though. So so did Solomon. Yeah. Okay, well, it was a long time ago now. If they're ever listening, I'm really sorry. But uh, called them, and they were like, dude, you know, I I know a guy, I think, that would like sit down and listen to you. Mm -hmm. He's the owner of LSA. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's let's go talk to him and see if he'll at least sponsor it. So I sat down with Sparky Pearson. Yeah. And... Uh, Showed him our business plan, and in the middle of the meeting, he was like, you know, instead of sponsoring, like, what if we just became your partner on this, 50-50? And that moment of my life was like, holy crap. <laughs> this this is going to get serious now. Yeah. Like, this, th there's somebody actually willing to invest in us and believe in us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that did a lot for us. Yeah, dude. And uh, did y'all have volunteers the first year? Uh, not as many. It, I mean, we did, for sure. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know what we were going to need. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. So, me and Corey were running around like mad men, uh, but we definitely did have volunteers mm -hmm. um, and anybody we could pull. Like I think Cameron Trevino who works at Pascal, yep. uh, he sat at Haley's for like six hours straight, you know, because <laughs> nobody else could. My little sister's over there. My parents are running around like, man, that's awesome. So you had, you had the family support <laughs> yeah. and you had the, you, and so then, then the second year comes about yep. and uh, I still, I think I had just moved here. Is that when Aesop came? The second year was Aesop and okay. World Technique, XXYYXX. Yep. Yeah, yep. I had just moved here and still didn't really know what it was. Right. And then somebody told me, like, Aesop, who is one of my favorite hip-hop artists, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a long, long, long list of favorite hip-hop artists. And then XXYXX, I was like, wait, no way. Like, he's going to come out. And I heard that, like, he, he did his set without his mixer. Like, his mixer, really? like, messed up or something, and he did it all the way I through without it. Yeah, apparently he said he, like, people were saying he was using, like, I a love mouse. learning stories. I don't even know about <laughs> yeah. this stuff, Well, you're you busy know? running around like crazy. <laughs> um, so you do that, man, and do things kind of start to fall into place over time, or does it get smoother? Well, the problem or? with the festival, and only doing a festival, because we weren't a promotion company yet, was you have one weekend out of the year to – test drive everything yeah. you've been working on for 10 months okay. you know yeah so you don't have that much time to adjust things you mm -hmm. got one weekend and then you're like okay let's try to remember everything that went wrong and try again next year yeah so it's it's it was really difficult um and so do you kind of like send like when you're like asking for a guy like Aesop or Immortal mm -hmm. Technique how do you kind of approach them I mean you sent a Facebook message the first time yeah. was it a different process this time yeah like, yeah then then I started going through booking agents yeah send them more yeah. of like a kit like here's what we have or here's what you could see yeah or... I don't I don't want to get too deep on how no, I feel you. how it's done I know the first year I will say I definitely sent an extensive kit on trying mm -hmm. to convince them to yeah. do it there you go yeah, that's what's up. So, all right. So then the second year goes goes, and then I, 
apply to play because somebody hit me up and was like, yo, you should apply to play this festival. You yep. know? And so you guys would work on this for 10 months, basically. Yeah. Wow. And so after the – so when the first when, – when it's done, when the festival is done, are you pretty much all ready? Like even before it's done, starting to come up with how, what are we going to do next year? Or? Uh, I mean, mm, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, I mean in some senses, in some, mm. some aspects of it. Uh, but like, like I said, you yeah. got to see what went wrong and what yeah. logistically not so much yeah. because you can't know until you try. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as booking, yeah, yeah. and just like as you're sitting stuff. there experiencing it, you're like, okay, we got you know we'll do this, yep. this, and this. Yep. So I remember, man, and I, I I've talked to you about this a thousand times, but I sent I sent in my thing and I had no idea. I had recently just moved here and I had just recently found like the vibe that I wanted to make with mm -hmm. the Kind Beats idea, and I uh, was working over at LSA. And I remember somebody, um, like, I went and saw Danielle play when she was still in class action. Yep. I went and saw her play, and so that's how I got to know her. And then the next, like, two days later on a Monday, I walked in for my shift, and we were just talking. And I was like, yeah, I just applied uh, I applied for the Octopia Fest, like, two weeks ago. I was like, are y'all playing it? And she was like, oh, you applied? And I was like, yeah. She's like, what's your name? I was like, I go by kind because I hadn't added the beats to it yet. Yep. And she was like, oh, yeah, you're booked. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, what? 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 Like, what? I'm, I'm, I'm booked. Yeah. As in, like, I'm actually going to play. And I, I must have sent you because I didn't know anything. Like, I didn't know how big this thing was, or the stress levels, right. or how busy people were. I probably sent you 25 messages really? on Facebook. And then finally, <laughs> like, I talked to Danielle, and she was like, she's like, just don't send any more messages to anybody. I, prom <laughs> I promise this is real. Because there were so many times, man, where you get. Just smoke, you know, like from people. They're like, "Oh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this." Yep. And the next thing you know, it's nothing. Oh yeah. You know, I All still, I still have a status um, from when I got off stage and Todd Little handed me a card mm -hmm. and was like, "Let's talk." And I have a Facebook status that popped up recently that was like, "It's nice to get a business card from a guy who has a business and wants to actually talk yep. and like did something." And from there, you know, they did all kinds of cool stuff for me. Put me in the magazine, released I mean, that's music. definitely one of the most important aspects of playing a festival yeah. as a regional or local artist is trying to network and really, because if you get a free pass, mm -hmm. you really got to try to leverage that into new yeah. connections um, and, and learning experiences. Yeah, and that worked out real well. Yeah. I was really happy. And like I, like from that point, everything just started going a little like in a good direction you right. know so i've already told you thank you but i'll say it again yeah, on yeah, air. Yeah, you know course, i appreciate you. that and and all all that hard work do, man we should do a little instagram selfie here why not no, no, you, but know? you can keep talking no i, I know i mean even right here on the air why not you that's know? what i'm saying dude do the, i mean do the it's instagram selfie it's great exactly you know we you know uh. <laughs> <laughs> perfect yeah man so like i remember playing that and that was the first time i'd ever heard my music on big like on a big setup right and i just remember being like oh yes but then like that's when i like had like immediately after that show um I, my dad had never seen me play before by the way my dad had never seen me play before and that's the first show he ever came to that's awesome all my like years of rapping or performing that was the first show he ever came to and later on that night we went back to just go dance you know just go hang out and my dad had my stepmom's purse around, or like you know, on nice. just in the middle of the crowd while uh, <laughs> while uh, Chris, I'm having a blank. Uh, Chris Masterson. Yeah, while Chris is playing, and my dad's just out there fist pumping. That's awesome. Like, having a dude. They had, I think my dad uh, spent thirty six dollars at the Lean Machine on chicken quesadillas. That sounds that about night. right. Just dude. give you an idea of what kind of. Your, your festival put my 60 year old father in party mode dude that's awesome i mean year <laughs> three was a great year man I, still yeah i love that and it was love just like year. i remember showing up and there was the big like pyramid kind of thing yeah. out there and everybody running around yeah and uh there was, was this like semi-bittersweet moment that i'll tell you about man another thing that happened where i remember i walked in to get my wristband and um uh, my ex-girl the girl who had just broke up with me yep. like, a month before was sitting there and i had to be like wristband please yeah. yeah i mean i got nothing but love for her now but Bye, back then <laughs> but back then i just came walk, walking out of there so happy yeah man. yep so now we had we we've had last year's yep we had ray shrimmerd we had ot genesis uh and then nora we, jones nora jones um although waves, next time we party we'll party hard waves uh, andrew, andrew wk, WK. I mean, so many names were out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was and and it felt big. Yeah, know, it kind of kind of did. It was in a, a compact area yeah. over there off Oak Street. But yeah. it, have you ever noticed how big that area feels when there's stages in right. it? Like when you set that up over there. Yeah. And uh, so who like 
I've always wondered, like, whose idea was it to get Andrew WK? Uh, I, I think so. Year three and four, Eric Polito helped me with the talent buying. He did a lot okay. of the talent buying uh, and kind of taught me and guided me. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that he, they emailed him or like one of the agents was like, hey, Andrew WK is available. Right He'd be like, hey, do you think Andrew WK is a good idea? And I'm like, yes or no, whatever it is, you know. So. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I, I, that's what I love about this festival is like you guys come up with a very unique lineup. Right. You know? Um, and so I can remember just walking into that back and uh, I couldn't really read any of it because there was so much, but there was just a huge whiteboard full hmm. of stuff. So what, yeah. like, how do you, like, logistic wise, how is the, like, it's like, okay, we got to have this much soda or this yeah. or this. You got to know, you know every, every tiny little moving piece. And how do you even keep that straight, man? Spreadsheets and spreadsheets and spreadsheets. <laughs> so you're an Excel master. I'm not a master. That's just, <laughs> that, it is deep. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, I, I've got to learn to disperse information to the right people, which I'm not good at. I'm getting better at it, mm-hmm. but I wasn't in years past, and some things would get yeah. missed. Uh, that's a big thing I'm, I've learned from it. It's uh, just the communication aspect of it. But, yeah, it's just sitting down and listing out every single piece of anything you could possibly yeah. need and you've got to have those people you can trust and then getting you know? it actually yeah. not and, just listing it and just having those people like yep. you know that you know you can trust they're gonna get had a really done. good court yeah and so now we are we are seeing a new growth you know mm-hmm. i personally think it's awesome dude you know that's what you want to see happen for people who are I'm, working I'm hard and I'm are really putting excited. things together um so you know let, let's talk about a little bit about this year yeah. uh, what, what's going on this year uh we got a sick lineup mm-hmm. <laughs> so far I'm, I'm man really i mean to have a track and bauer back to back that caught my attention right, right away as a guy who loves electronic music so what was the conversation kind of like this year between you and your team of people who you've worked together well so i mean so we lost sparky you know last year as an investor mm-hmm. uh, he's really busy has a lot of businesses he runs uh so we decided you know he decided we decided it would be the best interest of both to just kind of part ways um i don't know what that means Thank you for being a fan, Georgia G. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he, we, he, we split ways. So me and Brent Camp, beginning with Mike Houlihan, shout out to Mike, he's a great designer. Um, we started Slow Drip so we could continue to throw shows throughout the year. But uh, I put together another extensive business plan, and me and Brent would call. Once again, we were back in that position of like, dude, is the festival going to be gone? Like, mm-hmm. this could be it. You know, the last three years of my life, I've developed no skills. I've done nothing besides this. Yeah. I eat, breathe, and sleep this. It's, yeah. It's all I have. Um, and it might be gone. So we tried our hardest to find somebody who would do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried in Denton. Ch- took about 10 meetings in Denton. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, and so finally, we had to look outward and got a meeting in Dallas and the best possible people to pick it up, pick it up. And they yeah. are, I've learned so much from them in the That's past up, few man. months. Um, and yeah, they, they had the same vision as us, uh, go in the same direction. Very cool. And they've been, they've been amazing to work with. There we it's, go. It's really and exciting. And so, uh, what, what venues are we looking at this year? Uh, this year it's in trees, bomb factory, Canton hall. We nice. decided to do no outdoor stages. Okay. No fencing and security and generators and uh, porta potties and everything that goes along with outdoor oh, stages, yeah. which is, a lot. Oh, yeah. And just kind of scale it down a little bit and just mm-hmm. do the three venues, pull it off as well as we can, put together eclectic lineups that you can't see on every festival, give people an intimate experience, uh, and hope they come back. You know, that's yeah. cool. Well, that's awesome. I mean, as soon as you say the venues, like, uh, you know, Trees is not very, it's not like huge or anything, you know, you know what I mean? Um, and so they will, you'll have that intimate experience. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? Cannon Hall? Cannon Hall. It's a Cannon new one. Hall. I think they've had one show and they're only going to have one or two more before okay. Octopia. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be like one of the first opportunities to see the venue in action. Mm-hmm. And so I, cool. I, I feel bad, but I haven't been able to see, um, I haven't been to Bomb Factory. Bomb Factory is one of the show. best venues out there. I know it was already named one of the top hundred venues in the country. Wow. One of okay. our good friends is a senior planner at South by Southwest. Nice. He came to tour the venue and, uh, he was like, oh my God, this is, the backstage is the best I've ever seen, and he is, nice. I mean, he's 60 years old. Like, he's seen it all mm-hmm. from Austin to England up. to New Zealand to Hong Kong. He's been all over the world, and he was like, dude, this, the setup for backstage is the best I've ever seen. That's this awesome. This team dude. is amazing. Wonderful. So, yeah. That's, that's what I like to hear. It's and been so, a dream. What, what are the dates we're looking at? November 17th and 18th, and that's, we got more announcements to make. That's we got what's one, up, man. one really big announcement, and then uh, uh, we're going to also, we have a lot more locals to add. 
a, a bunch of when I say locals, you know, they're only local right now. Someday, hopefully, they won't be. But yeah, I mean, I saw Pearl Earl was there, and if I thought anybody yep. deserves it, like I was, I did some sound for a show that they played recently. Huge turnout. Yeah, yeah, Pearl Earl was great. And one of my awesome. favorite local bands. Yep. Yeah, I interviewed them a while back, and they were hilarious. They all came in here wearing different hats. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, so they're they're great, they and were, they put on a really good live show. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, we got uh, hopefully around eighteen. Uh, DFW acts and then around 18 national acts so we've got awesome, about dude. half and half split that's sweet so we're yeah, working really about excited. you know 36 acts around over, there is it two days two days yep and we're nice. gonna be releasing different types of tickets VIP tickets uh, you can already get your single day uh, probably doing single venue so whatever you want to choose your own adventure that's what's up, man. Go to one venue, go to all the venues, go to two days, whatever. Yeah, and it's got to be, I mean, it's got to be so much less stress. I mean, like you were, like, I didn't even think about, you know, once again, this is me not thinking about the logistics when I'm there. Right. You know, um, the porter potties, the fences, oh, the yes. outdoor staging, yeah. the rain. I mean, think about one of the big yeah. things that nobody really thinks about is routing electricity. So luckily, year three, when we got bigger, we had Preston Urson was like one of my partners at the mm-hmm. time. And I, he just, he routed everything. But you got you got to get these generators yeah. and then know what voltage and amps and whatever goes where and then route it all. You yeah. know, and it, it's, it's not like it can be stuff, where just man. any old any old jack wagon can no. run up and pull the thing. It's got to be all hidden appropriately yep. and put. And there's, I can only imagine the code and red tape, man. Like that has to be abided by for this. Kind yeah, of I thing. mean the cities, it, most of the departments like the fire department and the the police and all them, they're 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 pretty easy pretty, to work with. I mean you have it. to you have to have your stuff on on point yeah. or else yeah. you won't be able to do it. But it's not like they make you jump through crazy hoops to do mm-hmm. it. Now, did you do you have to apply for a permit? A bunch of permits. Yeah. Okay, a whole yeah, bunch of permits. A lot of permits, yeah. especially if you're shutting down streets. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. a big one. Yeah, and I'm going to give a shout-out real quick to uh, thank you to Disquad. Uh, not sure exactly who you are, but we're happy that you're watching the show. So that's what's up, man. Appreciate that. At least that. you're not dissing us, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're the Disc Squad, please hold all your disses till after the program. All right? We'd appreciate that. <laughs> so, man, there's... That is awesome, dude. So what? Are, okay, so we've got Bauer. Who else? And then who else do we got? Oh, I mean, we, on, on Friday we have Twenty One Savage, Aziz Gibson, uh, uh, and then that's at Bomb Factory. We're about to announce three or four more there. Okay. Uh, Hip Hop Acts, and then at Canton Hall right now announced is a track back to back Bauer. So they're playing together. Yeah, like, no, I'm, back I'm ex- and forth. Yeah, dude, that's it's gonna be sick. Um, and wrestlers will probably play with them. And then uh, at Trees, as of right now, it's just Tobacco, but we okay. got more announcements to make. Then Saturday, though, the lineup is getting way more fleshed out. Uh, Fantagram, Star Effer, I can't say that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Calm Trues is all at Bomb Factory. And then my personal favorite on the whole lineup, Hippie Sabotage. Huge party at Canton Hall yeah, with dude. Chrome Sparks, who's another great one. Mm-hmm. And then at Trees, as of right now, it's Boombox and Mystery Skulls, who are also two awesome acts. Yeah, man. And, you know, like you said, you you, you got uh, the old Starker. Star effort, yeah, and I would like that's that's what I'm saying, man. Is this lineup is 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 people that I've heard of, mm-hmm. but I've never been able to see. You know, I haven't yeah, been able I'm, to I'm see glad these because guys. These, these dudes have they share a very similar vision to me. I want to do I want to do like eclectic, cutting edge music, mm-hmm. and I also love hip hop. Uh, and it's hard to do outdoors in a small town like Denton. Yeah, uh, we got we've got the record number of noise complaints when Ray Shremmer was on stage. <laughs> it, w- it was like 96 or something like that. Um, so anyways, yeah, so now we get to go in the direction we've wanted to go in forever. Yeah, you know? that's what's up. And it's not because Sparky and Eric didn't want to. It's because we had to be sensitive to a small Yeah, town. absolutely. I mean, as somebody who had, who worked for that guy for mm-hmm. a long time, like, you know, I, so much going on mm-hmm. that he does. So, you know. Like, no, Sparky does more than people even know he does. Oh, I know. Scene. Great dude, and we would not be where we were without him and his team and everybody that helped work on I it. I wouldn't be where I am without that restaurant, so, yeah. you know, straight up. Like, so, if that restaurant doesn't exist, then I'm not in this, real, yeah. in this room right now. We got now. nothing but love and gratitude yeah, for Sparky precisely. and his crew. And that dude used to actually give me Christmas bonuses. Really? Yeah, he would That's walk cool. in and would give me a Christmas bonus on Christmas. Every year that I worked for him, he would do it. I never He's like, thank you for everything. <laughs> was, thank you for everything you did. Where's working? And, uh, and I was just like, all right, man. Like, if you wanted loyalty, you just you got it right yep. there. Like, yep. that's, that's what's up. Yeah, he's a good dude. And so now we've got Slow Drip. Yeah. You know, uh, That's there, was, there was Monocle LLC, as yep. you told me, um, and now we've got Slow Drip. So let's talk about Slow Drip. How did that mm-hmm. idea come about? Who's a part of that? Well, so Slow Drip, Monocle was me and Corey, and then me and Corey and Preston, and then just me and Preston, and then Brent came on, mm-hmm. and then it, we didn't really do too much with it. We did like Riff Raff and Waka and Little Debbie and a couple other shows here and there. Uh, but then once Preston left the festival, me and Brent were like, man, let's, let's get a fresh start. Let's do something new that's all ours that we control everything of. Uh, so let's make a new company. And we went through name after name and spitballed for weeks until I'm like pacing around in Oak Cliff in Dallas at Mike's office. 
Uh, and Brent's like, dude, what about Slow Drip? And I'm like, dude, I, I love that. And then everybody <laughs> we asked was like, yeah, that's a cool name. Yeah. And it really comes from coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but there's like seven meanings it could mean. Yeah. And to be honest, we think it sounds cool. Yeah. I was like, I remember when I was driving up here, I was like, I wonder if that name has anything to do with like, it's like just like the slow process of it development. It's a lot, dude. It's got like seven, thinking about like it. five of the meanings I probably couldn't say on the yeah. air on the family <laughs> yeah, friendly show, yeah, yeah. but uh, definitely about we're slowly dripping into the scene, the slow process of things, drip yeah. marketing. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of meanings to it. That's what's up, man. And so y'all have, y'all have been doing some shows uh, now, actually. You've been booking, <laughs> booking some shows that yep. have been going on around town. Um, do you guys have anything coming up? Uh, totally soon what do we got uh, we got astronautilus on I, I, I can't i don't know how i don't know if it's october 21st or 20th uh but at andy's um another good show to check out is a dude named paul cawthon on october 16th at andy's it's not our show but uh that dude is really gonna, he's gonna blow up and what kind of music is paul he's like i don't want to say outlaw country it's country but it's not generic country yeah. that you're thinking of he's a really good storyteller okay um then we also have octopia and then we have sadistic on november 10th with character and okay. Nacho picasso nice really he's like with uh pos and all those dudes nice really good uh and then after octopia we have roar who's a really cool underground band with biker gang booking they're helping us with that one uh so yeah that's all we got right now we're trying to chill until after the festival mm-hmm. and we'll probably try to add a bunch more Put, putting things together oh man making it happen yeah dude. yeah that's what's up, man. So how do you, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's very, very easy to get discouraged, you know, like yeah. you were saying, like, this is, this was my everything. This is what I've done for the last three mm-hmm. years. So how did you keep a positive attitude, man? How did you, how did you stay focused in order to keep I going? Mean, to be honest, I wasn't always positive and, you know, made so many mistakes and I, <laughs> bad mindsets, but yeah, I mean, that's one of the things is perseverance is whenever it feels like everything's going to fall apart or you don't know what's going to happen is just to keep going, keep yeah. going, eye on the prize. You know what you want. You have that vision. Just keep going and going. Uh, and now, you know, I've been working on the point where the festival isn't everything to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, uh, it's another my, my happiness and yeah. how I treat others and how I sleep at night is that's everything to me. Yeah. So if I lose the festival, it, it happens. That's just a part of life, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it won't destroy me like it would have even six months ago. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, I think that's the real way, though, is to work on yourself to where the other things are secondary yeah. to your own happiness and well-being, <laughs> you know? There you go, right? Man, and the reason I ask that question is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, um, they deal with these struggles. You know, they deal with feeling like, especially in the entertainment industry. Right. You're like, oh, man, this didn't work out. Or, oh, I didn't get booked for this show. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, man, I've done this for you know, the last three, four years of my life. And now I, I feel like it's kind of slipping away or something. And then, you know, how, like to maintain that, um, that drive right. and that want to succeed in a business and an area that is not easy mm-hmm. to do that in, you know, is, is, uh, I always tell the new artists that I talk to, try not to be reactionary. Mm-hmm. Don't think not getting booked for a festival or a show. It means you're a bad artist or that you can't make it. Not at uh, all. You'll see some new artists. They'll even go and start, talking bad about the promoter and the other yeah. artists playing <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that in the venue. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to get you anywhere in the yeah. music industry. Um, I heard a, a, a great little quote that this guy was like, anytime I heard the word, no, I just exchanged it for next. Like if somebody yeah. was like, no, I just heard, okay, next, next person, which, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure you heard, you've heard hundreds of no's, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. like to the point where you're just used to it. Oh yeah. And you, yeah. Don't, you don't even get offended by it anymore. Yeah. Like it, it's a <laughs> lot like sales. When mm-hmm. I was in sales, man, I got told 90 times out of a hundred. And those 10 are what made it like, you know, are what made my ends Totally. Meet. I mean, you can't ever have the perfect lineup you want on the festival. Mm-hmm. So you see how many times you get told no throughout yeah. the booking process. <laughs> you know, it's over and over and over and over. Yeah, man. Okay. So we're getting kind of, kind of closer to the end cool, here, man. We've talked a lot of music. We've got like eight, nine minutes left, okay. maybe 10 at most. So we've talked a lot of music, man. And I re- like, once I said again, I appreciate you kind of letting me pick, you know, pick yeah. your brain for a little bit and, uh, and see what it's all about. Um, Cause Recently, I you know nobody's approached me on anything big, but I you know all of a sudden like I started you know just doing the breakfast and beats thing, and even for that it's hard to get cats to answer a Facebook message right. where you're like this is a guy who lives down the street from me and I can't get yeah. this dude to answer. This answer is why people message. have managers and agents. Though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I need to start contacting those people. Right. You know that's what that's what they do, and then just like the logistics of thinking, all right, cool. So I've kind of built a little bit of a reputation. Let's see if I can get someone who would be cool with me bringing in an artist. But the other thing that I've kind of realized too is just because I like the artist doesn't mean that everybody else oh, is going to yeah, like them. Yeah. You know? and, so that's another lesson to learn yeah. in the booking process is don't go just based on what you like. Mm-hmm. You got to 
I mean, unless your taste is immaculate like mine. You know, <laughs> exactly. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think uh, I, that's what a lot of promoters' mistake they make is just because you like it doesn't mean everybody's going to like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, recently um, somebody approached me and they're like, hey, I'll give you such and such budget. Um, who can you bring? And I was like, well, you know, I could bring people with that budget, but um, – but I don't think that it's going to bring people out for you. Right. You know, like I don't think like, okay, so like an example, like this guy, Fleming Gosis, love the dude. He's got 110,000 followers on SoundCloud. Damn. But I mean, that's a lot, but it's not a lot. And, in, in, you know, those are, that's spread out over the world, mm-hmm. you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's another guy named uh, Stolen Drums out of Atlanta. And I would love to bring those guys out. I don't know how many people have ever heard of these guys, how many people would actually show up. So it would end up being one of those things where, sure, I'm excited for them to be there. But the first time Fleming Ghosts ever came to Texas, I went and saw him down in Deep Ellum, and I forget the name of the venue, but there was like 15 people there. Right. You know, And it was actually Prime that booked that show. You can trick yourself into thinking somebody's bigger than they are. Yeah, and so uh, Prime booked, that, booked him, and then um, – Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm having a blank on this guy right now. I'm going to remember it anyways. I loved it because I was excited that they were there. But yeah, that's, uh, you know, like you were saying, that's a lesson. And that's something that you kind of have to sit down and just look in the mirror and be like, all right, like, I like this kind of music, but. But not everybody does. Yeah. You know, know? like, does lo fi hip hop really have that big of a scene? Yeah. Nah, not, you know, and not really in this area per se. Totally. Like, we're doing the sadistic show. He's a very underground rapper. Yeah. Well, that'll be Uh, sweet. I mean, I'm hoping some people think it's cool, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, the thing, too, man, is, like, you know, you continue to push the DFW and the local artists from all the areas. And just like you said, don't ever, like, you know, this is my message to artists. If you get offended because someone told you no, you're going to be mad at a lot of people. Yeah, you you should get a manager probably. (laughs) Yeah, get somebody somebody (laughs) else, you know, to, to, to get those from you. And all that I also saw too, I was like, well, if I don't make it, all that means is I just have to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means you're just not there yet. Right. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, and there's could be any number of reasons that you get a no. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they don't like you as a person. They don't like you as an artist. You're a bad artist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And bless Danielle Longville. Yeah, she's great. (laughs) Shouts out Danielle. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you're doing right now, you know, much, much, much love. She posted a video from when I played at Andy's. Uh, of that, you know, she had it like up and I had never seen it. And I was like, Oh man, this is awesome. Yeah. It was a real old song that that was, that's from two, two and a half years ago. But do those five years seem like that long or does it just feel like it flew by? I mean, that's high school. It kind of flows by. That's eighth grade through 12th grade, man. I'm a much different person now than Mm -hmm. I was in the beginning. Like I feel like life is split up into like major moments, you know, and Mm -hmm. everything is different after the festival like we started, you know, that's a major milestone of Mm -hmm. before this, my life was one way after this, my life is a completely different way. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. it feels like a lifetime. Even for the festival goers that happens, you know, people go to festivals, it changes their lives. You know, Oktopia might've been the first festival. Some of these kids have ever experienced. Right. And the fact that they get to, so you have like ACL, which is huge, you know, it's hard to find a parking spot. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, you know, you can come up to a school or come up to a town that's got 120,000 people in it, 30,000, 40,000 are over at the college, you know, and then those kids can all walk yep. down the street to a was festival. Yeah, dude. Was like, sick, that's dude. Awesome. Last year like, was really fun. I was so stoked when I moved here and found that out. Yeah. You know, and I remember just walking out the door and being like, I can walk to a music festival right now and then walk back home. Yeah. That that's that's Denton is, is yeah. really cool like that. You know, and... So you've done fantastic with the music, man. And I, once again, my hat, you know, I tip my hat to you, dude. And I, ho- I, I wish you and the rest of your crew nothing but success from, from, from here on out, man. And so the next question, we'll get into stuff that's a little bit more serious. We've got to talk a little fashion here. You know? All right. Because, All right. yeah, because you, you got some style, man. And of course, it's, the damn wearing like sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that's the thing. It's stylish. It's simplistic, <laughs> but it makes sense. So the first thing I want to know is, like I said, at the beginning of the interview, I was like, I've literally had somebody be like, yo, man, I like what you're wearing. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Pataglia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I've said this out loud that this is, some, this is a way that I have seen a kid dress. And I was like, you know, that looks functional yeah. and fashionable at the same time. So I think there's a difference between fashion and style, though. Okay. I don't, I'm not very good at fashion. Okay. But I, I like classic style. Okay. You know, it's where, like, no matter when you wear it, it's going to look good. I mean, literally right now, it's just a plaid button down with a plain white <laughs> tee. Okay? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you know? So, like, how, like... Did you just like wake up one day like like Hey Arnold and open your closet and it was just all like button downs? And, no, and you know I have, I've gone through. I go. Through, I have to change my wardrobe every six months because I change what I want to wear so much. Yeah. Honestly, but right now my my uniform 
is uh oh there's danielle <laughs> what's up hey. danielle thank you for watching at campfire too appreciate y'all tuning in so yeah right now my uniform is chinos or jeans uh plain t-shirt and then sneakers or boots you know yeah, that's dude. it that's the that's the thing and I, I hate winter because then i have to layer and spend money on new outerwear <laughs> man i didn't even know i had this in my I closet sick. i opened my closet this morning and i was like because i walked to work because i live like a mile away and uh i was like and it felt so good you know i was like i've been walking all summer and everything but i was like i was like man i wish i had something light and i saw this like black thing hanging on to the like the side of my big old ll bean with the fur on yep. it and i was like oh like, i don't what, know who left this right behind there. but this is perfect yeah yeah so, like fashion and style like i feel like fashion you're like trying to chase trends okay. and be in the moment i think it's it's more for kids obviously mm -hmm. they're setting the trends but yeah. uh I, I don't know dude like i want to i at least want to look presentable yeah but no, that's, I, all I, that's all I try. No, I, I got you, man. And so then you have these T-shirts that you wear, dude, and they're like a bit longer right. and kind of cut like See, that's that. trendy. That's yeah, trendy but where stuff. the – dude, dude, see, I have a – and the reason I'm asking you this is because I have a strange body type where yeah. like my torso is way longer than my legs. And so like any time like I buy a shirt, it like it shrinks upward, and all of a sudden I'm like, I hate man, that, dude. I like, hate that. Like this is from Walmart. <laughs> but uh, I got the ones you're probably referring yeah. to. I only have like four of them, but uh, one's from Forever 21. One's from uh, Zoomies. Shout out Elijah Heaps. Uh, one's from uh, Target. Okay. And then the last one was from H&M. Nice. So, All right. See, like, and all I, the basic places. I don't want y'all to think that I've just been like staring at Batagia from <laughs> afar. Like, how does he look so fresh every day? But there's a small part of me that has. There's a small part of me. <laughs> I just glance for a moment and then, and then look back, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, Danielle, what's up? Shout out. Glad, glad, that, that, glad that you could join us You get tonight. all the shouts out. Yeah, man. So, dude, uh, once again, we're, we're almost finished up here. We started a little bit early, so we finished a little bit earlier tonight as well. Um, one of the last questions that I got to ask, man, because I ask everybody this and once again thank you so much if y'all are just tuning in i'm talking to matt battaglia here of octopia and slow drip and is it slow drip inc uh just slow drip shows okay slow drip shows man bringing a lot of great stuff to denton dallas the whole dfw area keep your eyes out for this cat right here uh so the final question man um what is your favorite snack oh god i can't i'm trying not to eat my favorite snacks right now <laughs> <laughs> there's so many though dude i could go on and on when i was a kid i used to put like 12 oreos in a bowl and put milk on it and eat it with a spoon <laughs> i love eggo waffles i love hot cheetos dude man. i'm amazed at how many people share my hot cheetos fascination dude i mean i could put those on a sandwich oh man i could, just, I could eat a whole bag in a sitting i'm getting older man i wake up with a hurt stomach in the morning if i just I mean, me those. too but it's worth it you know you got no pain no gain no <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pain and yeah, pleasure, exactly. Man. Yeah, I know, man. Hot che I swear they dude, they got to put something in yeah, that flavoring. That flavoring is so it's good. it's it's out of control. So if you ever um, want to do something kind of crazy, mm -hmm. man, get a, get you a, like a smaller bag of them and crush them up. And yep. if you're making like fried chicken or anything fried, throw the spicy really? Cheetos in the batter. I made fried mushrooms one time with spicy Cheetos in the batter. Whew. That sounds pretty good. Ooh, I know dude. you're probably you're not trying to eat your snacks right now, but anytime, man. If uh, well, mushrooms aren't so bad. Yeah, right? if somebody has, you know. Spicy or the hot flaming hot Cheeto chili. They made extra. Sp they made extra flaming hot. Somebody now. told me this. I haven't found. I haven't them yet. tried them yet. I yeah. haven't found them yet. It seems like you got to go to a special like window Specialty, that opens up. Yeah. You're like, Yo, can I give me yeah, some? Late of those at night. Who's your spicy? guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Kroger only sells them after twelve thirty. So man. Good. Well, that's what's up. Well, man, is there anything else that you wanted to shout out before we go tonight? Are there any shows? Uh, anything we might have missed? Yeah, I mean, shout out Andy's. I the production manager in there. So that's very exciting that I get to do what I love. Nice for a job. Man. Uh, so really excited about that. They got really good shows all the time. Like we just got glitter bombs over there every week now on Thursdays. Yeah. Like I said, Paul Cawthon on the 16th of October. Uh, there's a lot of good shows coming up there. Um, That's what's up, man. So yeah, it's going to be hopefully one of the best venues. And around. you know, dude, I could probably sit here and pick your brain for another hour, but we just don't have the time. Well, let's at least shout out the rest of the Octopia crew and shout yeah. out Brent and Slow Drip and Todd All for making guys. us look good. Yeah. Like Hulahan. Yeah, Todd has made me look good a couple times, yeah. man. Yeah. So hey I need to I need to get him an embargo on him though, so he quits working with other people. Yeah, I know. He's I, and he, I feel like his his skill, you know, is just better, better, better. Oh yeah, better, yeah. Better, you know. Totally. All, did he by chance make the, the roast of Mindy thing? Yeah. I yeah. Pretty much he's usually my go to guy for design purposes because uh, uh another guy I love is Mike Hulahan who I've shot out like yeah. three times. But he's uh, he's real busy in Dallas, so we haven't got to 
connect on anything in a while. Yeah, man. You know, Todd, Todd did the artwork for my last album that I came out with. And then those guys blessed them. Like one day they just hit me up. They're like, Hey, your album's in stores now. <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. Dope. Yeah. So, dope. So I, I, I got to go find it so I can, so I can take that Instagram look real cool. Yeah. They're good dudes. You know? So, what's uh, up, Hassan and G? Hassan and what's really good, man. Well, dude, once again, thank you so much dude, for coming for having on the me. show. It's been a Appreciate pleasure so talking. Much. Always yeah, is. Yeah, dude, talking with you. Y'all, this is Matt Battaglia, the man, the myth, the legend of many, many hats. Y'all be sure to keep your eyes out. Snag your tickets to Optopia. Too kind. Yeah, grab those. Grab you, you those. got the name Kind Beats for a reason. He's a kind <laughs> human. Grab, grab those, grab those uh, tickets to the Astronautilus show. Be on the lookout for Slow Drip shows. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic winter. I can feel the vibes already. Winter is coming, yeah. dude. Yeah, y'all make sure you tune in next week right here on Sound Values and stay tuned for Ellie Bell and the Denton Vibe right yeah. here on DentonRadio.com. Peace. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com. <laughs>